Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. Welcome back to the Ted Show. I am so excited to finally have this talented friend of mine on the show. This is Chase Shelley. She's got the most beautiful, beautiful name. She's a beautiful human being. We're going to learn about her journey. We're going to talk about music and the Lifeboat Project and all sorts of things that make up the wonderful Chase Shelley. <laughs> Welcome, Chase. How are you doing today? I'm well. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited yeah. that the universe, God, the whole world got together and finally brought <laughs> us <Underline>. here. <laughs> Woo! We manifested that one. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm very excited. Uh, you have such a wide range of a background. We met at a charity event. Uh -huh. um, didn't you know. stood out. You're the brightest you, one in the room. And you, <laughs> thank you. And you stood out as well. And then I got to learn that there were all sorts of facets to you uh, that I didn't know about. So uh, I just thought, God, what a great story you have. And of course, Till You Walk on Water. Wait, I know this title. Don't tell me. <laughs> we're going to talk about the title of the show, uh, but we're also going to get to know you. So Till We Learn to Walk on Water. I love mm. it. So welcome. So how are you today? Are you good? I'm well. I'm so well. I'm um I'm I'm tired, but it's the best kind of tired because I've been going from project to project and this has been the year of just seeing things happen and uh you have years of preparation and then you have when things happen and yes. and it's been so exciting and to be open to that and to uh, be as prepared as possible, but then sometimes be like, what am I doing? And look around and see the resources you have and go, okay, all right, it's time to, it's time to do this. And well, this is your season mm -hmm. for that. Yes. Season. Yes, we have a lot right. of different seasons. This is the seasons of uh, doing the things, getting well, we them done. Learn, we want to learn about you. So I told you before we went live that the audience loves an origin story. They kind of want to know a background. Uh, none of us got from point A to B on a straight line. So uh, give them a little 411 on you. Okay. Um, get us to where you're at and where you start. All right. I grew up in the Philippines. My parents are missionaries over there. They are still missionaries over there, uh, which is rare. They're going on 43 years. Uh, it's a joke. People are probably tired of hearing when they meet me, but I have to say it. I am the tallest, whitest Asian you will ever meet. <laughs> um, I have, um, my brothers have married Filipinas. I have the most beautiful, you know, mixed race family. And I miss it. I, I plan on going back hopefully sometimes next year just to visit. Uh, but that that formed a lot of my, my perspective, an international approach to things. I grew up singing in church and then I got into the arts. I started uh, modeling when I was 15. And then I had all these separate things that uh, my mother put me in piano and, and voice lessons. And then I was always a writer and a reader and then got into commercials and so I had all these separate things and then over the years it's all kind of come together and um, and I've been able to put them together and it's been wonderful and then the most recent um, venture is joining the lifeboat project which I've had um, I mean overseas uh, the issue of human trafficking is just known it's just known we know this happens, and so most of our resources are um, uh, are reaching out, working with law enforcement, uh, rehabilitation, counseling. Um, over here, however, it's very interesting. There's this extra layer you have to kind of um, penetrate. People just don't think it's an issue. They think it happens. You know, we think Liam Neeson had taken uh, that this is something that happens. You know, overseas, but not here. And that's not the case. So is, there's this extra bit of you have to inform people, you have to educate them, and they have to accept that this this happens in our backyard too. It's not just an overseas thing. So well, so it, many. So I have many questions think, across, yeah. the, <laughs> across the myriad of things that you just shared in your quick Cliff's Notes version. A little well, nutshell. Well, I much. love it. No, yeah. but I want to ask. So first of all, congratulations. You were you have been nominated as best. Jazz. I thank you. Singer, so uh, for is that Orlando Weekly? Is that yeah. okay? So Orlando tell Weekly. us a little bit about that because that's I want to take a deep dive, obviously, into okay. trafficking. It's a 
issue near and dear to my heart. Uh, but I want to I want the audience to learn more about you because um, sometimes people come in and they spend a lot of time talking about the organization and then we don't get to know their why we don't get to know more about them mm -hmm. and it's so good to see the human side so you have this whole well, other creative well, side right. yes um i i always had an appreciation for jazz music um and it was i was going to conservatory in new york city and uh, it was the first time that I encountered uh, Nina Simone. I didn't even know who she was. I went and I asked the barista. I was in the East Village. And I was like, who is this? What's, what's his name? And this very snotty barista is like, you don't know who this is? I had no ego. I was like, no, I don't. But I need to know. Because I heard, I, I, when I heard her voice, it was almost like someone gave me permission that I don't need to sound pretty. I can sound interesting. I can sound strong. Yes. And so that just opened up a whole new level of appreciation and um, and confidence. Like, all right, I can, let me try this. Uh, being Growing up just looking as obvious as I was, I didn't feel comfortable making mistakes or experimenting. So when I moved here, it was like, all right, let's try something. <laughs> and, and yeah, I never meant to be that jazz singer, but I love... I love the camaraderie. I love that it, every song can be different. And there are some songs I play with my band that uh, these songs have a spirit of their own. They refuse to be played the same way twice. They just won't have it. They won't have it. So don't even try. <laughs> and so it's respecting that kind of improvisation and jazz that uh, that challenged me because I um, I am an actress. I love my fourth wall. I love traditional classical things, you know, but then improv especially in a musical oh that was that's not my comfort zone at all <laughs> that's been a wonderful thing to explore it's opened up so many doors here uh, and orlando has been very very kind to me um with letting me explore that uh before before covid uh, and i still do have the big band called underground retro where we're kind of like a smokier edgier postmodern jukebox if you will and so we had we had monthlies at Stardust, and that just opened us up and um, really made me grow. So that's the whole jazz. Oh, part. I love jazz. I have a great respect for jazz players, but I certainly I think I have a bigger respect for jazz performers because mm -hmm. that music had to me has there is no rhyme or reason to it. <laughs> it's a you're well, basically a moaning jazz. You're, you're emoting the whole time mm -hmm. uh, in a way that is unique to each performer. It's not like a concise uh, pop song where there's a start, an end, and a bridge, and you know everything mm -hmm. works out at the end. Jazz is can leave you hanging. Um, there's just so many wonderful facets about mm -hmm. jazz, but a jazz singer, a jazz performer, I feel like you really have to take that because your your vocal your vocals are your instrument. You have to know your instrument. You have to know where you can go. You have to know your capability. And some, and I've surprised myself with if I'm surrounded by by people who I know have my back, and I can kind of push and try something different. What you what jazz allows you to explore as a singer as a musician. It's just you'll discover something and go, I have no idea what I just did, but I, I can I can feel it in my body. I can remember the, the rhythm and the melody of it. And it just, yeah, you can't be stagnant with jazz. It was not meant to be that way. It was kind of the punk rock of its day. It was supposed to be edgy. It was supposed to be new. Um, it, it's not this elevator music. It, 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 it's supposed to, every song's supposed to have that life of its own. I feel like a lot of people don't, uh, they appreciate it, but they don't understand it necessarily. And so I feel like jazz is very misunderstood. Um, a lot of people say, wow, you listen to jazz, why? <laughs> um, and I get it because it is not, there's no conformity. Well, and, and to be fair, and I might get in trouble for saying this, but that's okay. Um, some some old school jazz people are some of the snobbiest musicians you'll ever meet. They are. And they and that and that is that is to a fault. Uh, if you go to like certain jazz place or certain blues place, it tends to have this very members only, you know, 
club yeah. vibe to it. And that's why with my original music, I don't do that. I take a little bit from blues. I take a little bit from jazz. I love blues rock. And I infuse my own thing into that because I believe true jazz was supposed to be, I mean, it, it broke barriers culturally. It, it, it broke down something, you know, when it was in its prime that we needed broken. And it brought people together and it challenged a lot. So it's a, it's a mood. It's a whole, when mm -hmm. I want to listen to jazz, I'm in the mood for that. And I don't know how to explain it. It's a positive thing, mm -hmm. what I'm saying. But I, I have to, I want to, That that's some, it's a need. It's a, it's when you mm -hmm. listen to jazz, it's different than just turning on the radio and disconnecting. Yes. Uh, you're, you're connected when you are listening Agreed. Uh, jazz. And I feel like that is, it's a commitment almost, which I also think uh, a lot of people are fearful of. They, just like you have noise in the background when you're watching the same TV show for the 900th time. Yeah. <laughs> but with pop music, you have it in the background and it's kind of mm -hmm. that background noise. Mm -hmm. Jazz, I feel like demands a lot more from the listener. Yes. Uh, and and dependent, depending on your, you know, your subgenre of jazz, there's some jazz, like experimental jazz that I respect but I can only listen to so much because there's just a lot of frenetic energy going everywhere. And I'm like, okay, yeah. we need to. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about, uh, you're a creative. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of creatives don't go to the nonprofit side. So tell me a little bit about how that all came to be. You gave us a little snippet, but it's one thing to uh, stumble onto it. I think they'd like to know the story of how that actually uh, that, um, that all has to do with, uh, with my background and my upbringing. Uh, I, uh, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, she's a preacher's kid. She's a missionary kid. She's probably really rebellious. Uh, yes and no. I, I, I have been privileged enough to see it done right, to see resources go where they need to be, where they need to go. Um, I have seen the, incredible power of lives being changed by people listening to a call, by being selfless. Uh, and that is how I grew up. And because so much of everything else that I do is about me, it is. Because if I don't write the song, no one cares. If I don't write the, the screenplay, no one cares. If I don't go to the audition, no one's gonna, you know, I, I work with agents, they're wonderful. But if I don't take the initiative to create my stuff, no one's like banging on my door to, to do that. So, so much of my life, my creative life is about me. I think it's healthy and necessary that I have something that has nothing to do about me, my art, anything. Um, it, it started, it started though, I met Jill years ago. And then last year I got to perform at the gala and that was wonderful. And then I was just harassing her. I was like, use me more. <laughs> Because this is something that I feel strongly about. It's something that I did grow up witnessing. And I'm sure even as a little kid, there were a lot of things I saw, a lot of elements of, of poverty in the third world that uh, maybe we have in the inner cities here, but we don't, we don't see, you know, every day. Yeah. And so having the knowledge that I have, uh, seeing what I've seen, I do have thicker skin, so I know I can last hearing the stories that you hear every day. Um, and they still they still break my heart. I still have to give them to God and pray about it because I don't want to end up cynical and jaded, which is sometimes just a coping mechanism because you're like, if I hear one more God awful story of how humans are awful to each other, I, I give up. So so that's, that's what that happened. It really is um, seeing the selflessness of my parents and and wanting to feeling that it's right to, to give back and in any way that that I can. So. Beautiful. Tell me what one miss. Uh, you know, I've been. Uh, we've had Jill on several times. Uh, we talk about uh, traffic and <laughs> fire at door. Her. Um, I miss her here at. You know, you'll never. You'll never have to guess what she's thinking. Ever. Ever. Which is amazing. Which is get, necessary transparent love she is. it i yeah. love her um but t tell us a, a misconception that people have about trafficking um one of the things that always surprises people i'll throw one out 
is that um, it happens in our backyard that we are actually uh, one of the top destinations, sadly. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think people have a perception of what a traffic victim looks like, what uh, happens, what their background is. Uh, can you give us kind of educate us, enlighten us on uh, what the reality is? They, they all look so different. And I think what people, you know, from, again, I use examples, movies like Taken with Liam Nielsen, and you have these horrific images of, of, of young people physically tied up or tied to beds or, or something like that. Not saying that doesn't happen, but the majority of trafficking victims, they're, they're, they're in chained in here. Yes. It's a process of, of manipulating someone uh, I know this isn't a popular word right now, but grooming someone, young people online, it does happen. Uh, and yes, eventually you get someone to think that they owe you or they have something on you or um, there's a picture out there that you don't want to get out. So you agree to do X, Y, Z. And it's this shame. It's this internal shame. It is manipulation at its best best, and I mean best, I get it's most disgusting. So the chains uh, are, are in here. And um, you go after people who are vulnerable. You go after people who have been hurt. You go after people who are uneducated, who are isolated. Big thing right there. People who think they don't have the option to say no, to reach out for help. Um, and what does that look like? It looks like a lot of people. Agreed. So it, 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 they... Uh, this is a business, people. You have to understand this is a multi-billion dollar business. Yes, second only to the drug business. And they tr they are a commodity to people. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is, it is something that we don't like to think about in our world of theme parks, uh, our tourist state, our mm -hmm. sunshine state. But... It is a problem that is just getting bigger. The resources and the services that the Lifeboat Project, for example, provides, uh, this is something that they, you all cannot hit the need. The need is so the demand for services, the demand for people who are in that situation to get them out, the aftercare services, the retraining, the rethinking, it is uh, epidemic Mm -hmm. Honestly, from my experience, and that's why I, um, I, I working in the nonprofit, uh, you know, sometimes people because you know it's all a matter of funding, and uh, and I truly believe there are enough resources. There's enough funding for all of us because we all need each other. Yes. One nonprofit cannot do this whole thing. We all need each other, and so we need uh, we need those who have the emergency services you know, which we don't do. We're more on the, 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 after they've gone through that, we're the ones who will connect them with education, mental health counseling, uh, you know, medical aid. Uh, we're, we're, we're in there for, for the long haul. Yes. And we need all of them. Uh, it's, um, it's an every joint supplies type thing. It is. Mm -hmm. And I could talk about that forever, but I'm going to wrap us up. Um, I told you, till we learn to walk on water, that is the title you cho you chose. I chose um, that because it was lifeboat, and it reminded me of my favorite uh, my favorite book, which is "Till We Have Faces" by C.S. Lewis. And this one chapter where it all comes together is, you know, how how can God see us until we have faces? And it's like until that divine intervention comes in. Well, there's the there's the work, there's the partnership. You know, until we learn to walk on water, we need a lifeboat to get to people. Love it. All right. So we have multiple things that I want people to reach out to you for. I want them to follow your music. I want them to learn about the lifeboat project. So what is the best way on all levels to reach the one and only Chase <laughs> Chalet? I would direct you to my website, chasechalet.com and sign up for the newsletter. I'm I'm starting to get better with that communicating <laughs> to people directly. I know, seriously, I am a dinosaur when it comes to technology. It's not, not even cool, but I do have a single coming out August fifth. 
I know. I'm nervous. I should have had you perform. <laughs> Next time. Next time. I'm on my keyboard here. <laughs> yes, that. And then we just wrapped a feature film uh, wow. in Tampa. And then we wrapped a short that I wrote that we're putting a treatment together to then get um, get some funding because we want to turn it into um, a feature film. And then there's a, there's a lot of other things too in the works, and it's uh, it's exciting. It's exciting. I need I need to focus. <laughs> Listen, we all we all need to focus, especially creatives. It's hard because you're always in creative mode. Squirrel, shiny, what? Huh. It's constant, just constant. It was such a blessing to have you. You know, God knows what He's doing. So that day that you sat down at the Women's Council of Realtors. Table. That was that was that was perfect. That was, was meant fun. meant to be. You have a amazing spirit. You can't not be uh, engrossed when you're speaking and want to follow your story and want Very to kind. Thank you. Uh, do with you whatever you're trying to do good for the world. We want to do it with you. So I want you guys to uh, go to Chase's website. Go to the lifeboatproject.org. Uh, there are so many things that you can follow and get involved with in both um mm -hmm. thank you for the light that you shine in our community it's a beautiful bright bold one and i'm thankful <laughs> for you. thank you for having me and for doing what you do uh you're also nominated i know that for Orlando. Mm -hmm. true best non-radio podcast uh so i am going to take it and thank god for it and um you know, self-promotion is hard. It's much easier for me to promote you than it is to promote me. We'll have to do um, that for each other because, yeah. Yes, like, and I've been working on, on that. Instagram. That's right. I know. All right, Chase, thank you so much. Bless you. God bless you. Thank, thank you for you all for you doing. Thank you for having me. Y'all get involved. Follow Chase on all of the platforms. Get involved in the community. Uh, human trafficking is a epidemic problem here, right here in our own backyard. Um, and if that is what you'd like to get involved with, we can help you. And of course, if you're a jazz enthusiast, a creative, <laughs> you want to go to Chase's personal page, which is scrolling across the bottom. We'll see you guys soon. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Chase. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Have a good